Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levi, the gamer's doctor, your esports doctor, talking to you today about carpal tunnel syndrome. This is a subject that we've covered multiple times, but I still get a lot of questions about it, and I get a lot of requests to do videos about it specifically. How it impacts the gaming community, how it impacts people do a lot of typing or texting or keyboarding or mouse use is really extreme. So today I'd like to go over the basics of carpal tunnel, what it is again, the anatomy of carpal tunnel, as well as how it's treated, and how it's treated surgically and non-surgically. So, for myself as an orthopedic surgeon, I see a lot of gamers, of course, from all over the world, and a lot of athletes who develop carpal tunnel syndrome. And I want to give you some basics today about it, how to prevent it, hopefully, and more importantly, how to prevent any type of surgical intervention. So, let's begin. So, what is carpal tunnel? Carpal tunnel is impingement of the median nerve under the TCL, the transverse carpal ligament. So if you think about the layers here of the hand over this area, there's skin and then there's fat and then there's something called the palmar aponeurosis. And then under that, there are some vessels and then the next thing is the transverse carpal ligament. Under the transverse carpal ligament is the median nerve. So. When there's a problem like carpal tunnel, someone will come in and they'll have the following problems. They'll have numbness and tingling in their thumb, index finger, middle finger, half of the ring finger. They'll have a decrease in dexterity, decrease in strength. They'll have pain that wakes them up at night in their hands. We have to shake their hands out. They will have difficulty driving, difficulty playing sports, just difficulty in life. They'll also come in and say, well, Dr. Levi, I'm dropping all the cups and plates in my home because I have no strength in my hands. So, if you have those problems, of course, it can be associated with carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, the issue here is, well, how do we treat it and who commonly has it? Well, it commonly affects women and it commonly affects people in their late 30s or early to mid 40s. However, what I see now in the gaming community, it affects people I've seen as young as 13 years old and as old as 89. So, and the person I've done surgery on for carpal tunnel, the oldest was uh, 99. I think he was 99 and a half actually. So, it can affect a wide demographic. So, if you have those problems, it's possible that you have carpal tunnel. So, it's important that you talk to your healthcare professional. And there are a lot of tests that we can do. The first thing that is most important for any physician, of course, will be to get your history and to do a physical exam. Because once we do that, we can see if there really are these issues that you think are bothering you and how we can help you. Now, there are other tests we can get, a test called an EMG neuroconduction study, whereby they will place needles in certain specific points of your upper extremity to check your nerves, specifically the median nerve, but also we'll often check the median nerve as well as the ulnar nerve when you do this. Because there's something that we'll talk about another time is cubital tunnel syndrome, which is the ulnar nerve is affected here at the elbow. But for now, carpal tunnel. Now, the other thing that we will get is an ultrasound sometime because an ultrasound can tell us if there is a ganglion cyst or some type of mass that's impinging on the median nerve here at the carpal tunnel. Now, with that said, if we do all of those tests and it's positive that you do have carpal tunnel and, and there can be a wide variety, sometimes it can be from 20 to 40% of the tests, uh, especially the EMG can be negative when the person still has carpal tunnel. So I want you to know that if you have a negative test, it doesn't mean you don't have carpal tunnel, it simply means that it wasn't picked up by that test. It all depends on the sensitivity of the test as well as the operator of the EMG. You know, who performed the test? Did they do it really well? Did they do it properly? So a lot of variables there. Now, Let's talk about how do we treat carpal tunnel. Well, we can initially treat it with a change in what you're doing. For example, if you're gaming for 18 or 23 hours a day, well, maybe game less. That's important. Maybe game differently. Maybe use a different mouse. Make sure that your setup is ergonomically balanced. You want to maybe change the mouse setting to maybe be less, uh, less sensitive maybe at a mid-range. Change your keyboard to make sure it's ergonomically balanced. Make sure that you're sitting properly while you're gaming, that your, your posture is appropriate, that you're not leaning your shoulders down, you're not dipping your neck down when you're gaming, you're not in this type of position when you're, when you're holding a controller, for example, that your, your chest
chest is upright, your shoulders are square, your head is up, and your neck is relaxed. Uh, other things that you want to correct, of course, is your work. If you're working at a desk that's not balanced, if you're doing an extreme amount of keyboarding every day, these things may have to be corrected. Or your mouse, you may need for a mouse, you may have to change that to a, a, a trackball. It depends on what works for your body, especially if you're having problems, you want to do things quickly to prevent the progression of carpal tunnel. Now, if those tests are conclusive that you have, and if the tests don't say you have and you still have symptoms, these are the ways that we treat carpal tunnel. Number one, we will ask them to change their work habits, whatever you're doing. Number two, we will treat you in a brace for a short period of time, because if you use a brace for a long period of time, it can actually make the entire extremity much weaker because you're not using your hands and your fingers and your wrists properly. So, you use a brace for a short period of time, and of course, the big thing I use in my practice is acupuncture. I love acupuncture. It's really an underutilized and an underappreciated mode of healing. So I love acupuncture. So I start off in my practice with acupuncture as well as diet. I ask the, the patient I'm taking care of, I'll ask them about their diet. Do they have a lot of sodium in their diet, a lot of, of fried foods, a lot of sugar, a lot of white rice, a lot of white bread, you know, things that really don't have a lot of great nutritional value. So we talk about that. We also talk about the need to, to exercise. We have to exercise. Exercise, like gaming, exercise is a lifestyle. Gaming is a lifestyle. So I want you to really consider doing that also. It's so very, very important. So if acupuncture has not been effective, the next thing I do in my practice is physical therapy. They'll see an occupational therapist or a physical therapist for maybe three to four weeks to see if that gives some benefit. Now, if none of that helps, then the next thing we can talk about, of course, is revisiting their work site or their gaming area to make sure that everything is ergonomically balanced and working properly for their body, their body type, for their height. Then, if none of that helps, then we can talk about something more invasive. The more invasive thing, of course, would be an injection to the wrist. So we'll inject the carpal tunnel with the steroid. Now, I'm not big on any medication, but sometimes, of course, we have to use it to help the patient to get better, so we do. And we'll do an injection. I, in my practice, I use Kenalog, and sometimes I'll, I'll use uh, Depomedrol, but more often, Kenalog. And we'll do an injection with that and Marcaine. If they have relief from that, great. Now I'll tell you my practice, the statistics that I have are the following. 60% of people get better from two weeks to two to five years, and then the symptoms return. About 30% of the people that I give injections to in my practice, and again, I'm not talking about the literature in general from, from other places, other studies of the hospital, I'm talking about my practice, the Dr. Levi practice, the Harrison and other PD Institute. There we see 60% of people get better from two weeks to two to five years, then their symptoms come back, about 30% of people that I have want one injection, the pain, numbness, and tingling and decreased grip strength goes away and they never come back again, which is great. When we call them back, they say, hey, I'm not having problems, I don't need to see you, which is fantastic. And then 10% of people, it has no effect at all. Um, and then we have to talk about more invasive things like surgery. Now, but I do tell everyone, always try to avoid surgery, because surgery always does, it will do one of three things, make you better, make you worse, or no change. So you're talking about a 33.33% chance of getting better. So I always say if you can avoid surgery for anything, try to avoid that. Now, with that said, I want to go over some basic exercises for carpal tunnel syndrome. These can be done in your office, at your gaming site, in your car. They're just simple to do. So again, they're a the gliding exercise. We talked about them before, but I added a twist to those. So you can do them this way with the hand open. You can do them with the fist closed this way, and then you want to reverse it. So 10 this way, 10 that way, 10 with the hand open. 10 with the hand open going the opposite direction. Then you can do these. These are flappers, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then the up you wanna really hold, so you really stretch out your, your forearm, stretch out the extensors of your, of your hand. So up and hold like that. You're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds. Really, really easy. I don't want you to hold it flexed for 30 seconds. I want for the carpal tunnel specifically, I want you to hold it up for 30 seconds just like that with the elbow straight, with your neck relaxed, with your shoulders squared, all right? Very, very simple. Then the other things that you can do, of course, are just shaking out your hands, shaking out your wrists, just like this, for about 30 seconds, just shake them out. 
You can do this every hour for about a minute. It's really easy to shake out your wrists. Or you can shake them out and go around this way, shake them out and go around that way. Really simple. So with that said, carpal tunnel is one of the most common entities that I treat in my practice, not only in the gaming community, but with people who do a lot of repetitive motion. So I hope this video helps you. Please subscribe below and follow me and like me on all my social media platforms. And I want to remind everyone, of course, that you can join me every first Saturday of the month on Twitch TV, where I interact with gamers from all over the world. I'll take your questions. We'll talk about fitness, health, and lifestyle. And remember, gaming is a lifestyle. This is Dr. Levi. I'll see you soon.